Here are six common modern reasons why you might reach for a compressor. The first is to control levels. That means maybe some parts of your signal are too loud or some bits are too quiet and you want to make them more consistent. This is actually the original reason why compressors were invented in the first place. The second common option in modern production is that you want to glue a group of instruments together, whether that be a bass group, a synthesizer group, a group of backing vocals, or a submix or an entire mix. The third reason is that you actually want the artifacts of the compression. And what I mean here is that you want the time domain effects that the attack and release controls of a compressor gives you. A classic example is a slow attack and a fairly fast release will actually bring a lot more punch to drum sounds. The fourth one is you may want the harmonic distortion of the compressor device. Here I'm talking about the actual sound, the mojo, the juice of that compressor circuit that either you've heard about and you want to experience or you know about and you want to bring some of that to your production. Number five is using compression as an effect. For example, side chaining or the extreme style of compression that some units are actually famous for. And number six is frequency dependent compression. And here I'm talking about things like DSs, but also multiband compressors that are often great at problem solving. Let's have a look at all of these case scenarios and see also if there are any other tools available. So let's look at a classic piece of leveling with one of the compressor's first jobs, the human voice. This is a voiceover section. This is me talking quietly. This is me talking loudly. Now I'm gonna use one of the original older devices, the Teletronics LA2A. This is UAD's version of it. And like most compressors that you come across, this is actually gonna act first on the loudest part. So we may as well cycle round the loudest part and see what we can get. Two controls on this. I'm gonna use this right hand one, peak reduction. This is me talking loudly. 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 Now let's go back to the front and hear the volume difference between them. This is me talking quietly. This is me talking loudly. You can just hear the first bite of the compressor circuit there, but they've been fairly well leveled, but the loudest one has really dropped in level. So the whole thing's sounding a bit quiet. So now what we're gonna do is drop down to the gain control, the second control on the left here, and then use this to regain the volume level that we've lost. Let's start with it off. This is me. 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 That's looking pretty good. Now let's play the whole thing through. This is me talking quietly. This is me talking loudly. And here are the results of that processing. And as you can see, what I've done there using that two stage process is actually boost the level of the quietest bits. Now that sounds unintuitive because you are squashing down the higher bits but that's what reduction in dynamic range means so this top example has a higher dynamic range in other words there is more of a difference between the quiet and the loud bits now one thing i do want to draw your attention to is just the front of this word here you see on the original that's really quiet and it's jumped up enormously that is the emulation of the opto circuit and the attack portion of that type of compression is actually quite slow. And the end result is the wave fronts, the very first bit of that spoken sound escapes through the compression system at a louder level. This adds punch. So two simple stages. First of all, we've brought the level of the loudest bit down. Then we've used what's known as makeup gain to raise the level of the whole thing this has reduced the dynamic range and as a very useful side effect, it has brought up the relative level of the quiet bits. This is good, Victor. Uh -oh. But there is a trade-off. I deliberately kept the air conditioner on whilst I recorded this little bit of vocal. You can hear it very quietly in the background on the original. You can hear it much louder on the compressed version. Using it in this manner will raise the relative level of the noise in your signal. We call this raising the noise floor. Some devices have legendary skills on particular instruments. For example, this is Arturia's copy of the DBX160 and it's legendary at being able to sort out volume differences in bass instruments. Here's a live bass line and you'll hear the higher notes are slightly quieter. I've already got this set up, so let me just turn the bypass off as we play through.
Now let me do the same in the context of the track. When it comes to level, this can also be done completely manually. For example, here's our bass part in solo. And we know the end bit's a little bit quiet there, so I can actually just split this region out. And inside of Ableton here, every DAW now has this feature. I can actually manually bring these up. One area this simple manual process is ever so useful is on vocals. Most people do not use an outboard compressor when going in these days. So the vocal recordings are incredibly dynamic. So it's ever so useful to go through the recording and get everything up to a decent level using clip gains before you start plugin processing. Now, of course, there are plugin solutions. Melodyne, for example, has an amplitude tool, which means you can turn any quiet notes up. You know that I don't want you want You know that I don't want you And despite their dreadful attempt to force everybody onto subscription you cannot deny the power of waves This is Vocal Rider and basically I'm going to set a level up here that I want the vocal to be and then you've got some boundaries for maximum and minimum fader control and this plugin attempts to replicate the human action of riding a fader on a mixing desk You know that I don't want you know that I don't want you. You know that I don't want you. So I've turned up the sensitivity and given it more range. So in other words, it can gain the fader up. But as I say, the cheapest and easiest way is to use the clip gain inside of any DAW. This is one of six videos covering common usages of modern compressors. So please don't forget to check out the others. Also, we've created this. It's an emulated vintage compressor cheat sheet where we're describing each of these original designs, like for example, the Uri 1176, with descriptive terminology. We've also given you some ideas of what it's great for and some tricks or quirks of that particular device and the emulations. Don't forget to grab it using the link in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.